I see a light at the end of the tunnel. At 9.23 this morning, Sandra Lindsay became one of the first people in the United States to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The critical care nurse at Northwell's Long Island Jewish Medical Center in New York, not only helping fight the pandemic, but also losing loved ones to the virus as well. Just say to everyone, please take the vaccine. Please listen to the science and let the science guide your decisions. Three. Across America today, a giant dose of hope for a country struggling under the weight of the pandemic for nearly a year, logging more deaths and infections from the virus than any other developed nation in the world, as the country now marks more than 300,000 dead. Nearly 3 million doses of Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine rolling out first to frontline healthcare workers and nursing home residents in 145 locations as the largest vaccination campaign in U.S. history gets underway. 50 million Americans expected to be vaccinated by the end of January, with about a third of Americans vaccinated by the end of March. The story of how this vaccine, with 95% efficacy and delivered in record time, came to be is nothing short of miraculous. When I think about the major infectious disease accomplishments in public health in my lifetime, the polio vaccine, the eradication of smallpox, they've saved millions and millions of lives. They took decades to accomplish. If we can stop this in its tracks, that would be a phenomenal accomplishment. It's only been a year since the world first heard reports of a strange virus coming out of China. Chinese health authorities are still working to identify the virus behind a pneumonia outbreak in the central city of Wuhan. A week later, China releases the genetic fingerprint for SARS-CoV-2. Scientists leaping into action while the rest of the country remained mostly unaware of the deadly virus. From that first moment, I knew scientists across the globe were going to get to work to figure out a path to a vaccine. Within that viral sequence, scientists looking for a small bit of that library to use to make a vaccine. When the genome was published on January 10th, I was home and I got an alert on uh, my phone and um, my immediate reaction was go. As soon as the sequence was released, we could quickly maneuver towards the vaccine development. Biotech company Moderna outside Boston has collaborated with the NIH before. It was really exciting those first few days, that first weekend in January, knowing that it, we were gonna be able to move quickly. By January 21st, when there was the first case in the U.S., we had just aligned on what our vaccine would look like. When that first case happened, we said, we need to move much faster. In Germany, a married couple at BioNTech are also racing to develop a drug. My first reaction was, we have to stop it. It felt like an obligation. The pair had already created the technology to fight cancer using genetic material. We know that we have the technology in place, and we already knew that our technology is able to prevent infectious diseases of other kind. Where immune system whisperers, so to say, are needed in order to engineer the best possible vaccine. We weren't racing against each other, we were racing against time. Tonight, the first human-to-human -human case of coronavirus here in the U.S., just as health officials now declare a global health emergency. By early February, all the front runners in the race for a vaccine are off and running. Oxford and Johnson & Johnson approach their vaccine using viral vector technology, taking a different kind of virus, scooping out its innards, and replacing them with a kind of instruction manual. When injected, it coaxes your cells to produce proteins that look like those on the outside of the coronavirus. From there, your immune system mounts a defense. Novavax takes a more traditional approach. One thing we bring to the table is our company had done this for Ebola. We had been very fast. We made a vaccine very similar to what we had here. 
Moderna and BioNTech were betting on mRNA. These vaccines take genetic material, mRNA, and coat it in a little protective package that is injected into your body. That instructs your cells to start churning out proteins that we would see normally on the surface of the coronavirus. The immune system thinks it's a foreign invader and mounts a defense as though you had actually been attacked by the real virus. This technology allows us to make a completely new vaccine in less than 30 days. We're able to move quickly because our technology has been used in personalized cancer vaccine programs in the past. The mRNA vaccines, we've been investing in for quite some time because you only have to change a tiny little bit to have it make a vaccine. And so that's why it can be done much faster. You needed to get multiple platforms and multiple candidates. You could not put all of your eggs in one basket. So we need to make sure it's safe and we make needs to make sure it works. That entire process will take at least a year and a year and a half. I thought that was ridiculously optimistic, aspirational. Just as the United States suspends travel from Europe, Moderna moves its phase one vaccine trial up from April to March, enlisting brave volunteers like Jennifer Holler in Seattle. This was, this was important to me to be able to do something, to, to, to take a risk that others can't. Volunteer Jennifer Holler getting the first injection in Seattle as part of that clinical trial. I wasn't afraid because I trust science. The day after Moderna launched its phase one trials, BioNTech announces it will partner with Pfizer, one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. I've, I've never seen us working with a partner better than uh, we are working now with BioNTech. And that was very important so that we can be able to deliver. Meanwhile, Johnson & Johnson scientists identify a vaccine candidate that was succeeding in the laboratory. And there was first aha moment that I was called on Friday afternoon by one of my team members uh, and she told me it's working. By early May, with millions on lockdown and the virus ravaging the country, the pressure is on for scientists to come up with a vaccine as quickly as possible. I read the newspapers and you think it's horrible, but it's also really motivating to, to go that extra mile again and again and again to get that vaccine out. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar, a former drug company executive, applies pressure to the process. I stepped back and said, you know, we are the country that put a man on the moon, that created the atomic bomb in three years and won World War II. We can get a vaccine by January 1st. Through a historic series of funding bills, my administration is providing roughly $10 billion to support a medical research effort without parallel. It's called Operation Warp Speed. That means big and it means fast. Operation Warp Speed harnesses the power of pharmaceutical companies and the U.S. military and collapses the three-phase vaccine development process so that the steps happen simultaneously. No one, and certainly the FDA, wants to see any shortcuts in the development process. So we've had a number of measures that we've instituted, such as rolling review of data. That's caught months to years off of the development process. On June 1st, Operation Warp Speed awards a half billion dollar contract to emergent biosolutions to begin the mass production of vaccine. Previously, we responded to things like Ebola, Zika. We were built for pandemic response. All the equipment you see in here, the 2,000 liter tanks, we can rapidly crank out millions of doses of, of any vaccine. Coming up, once there's a safe and effective vaccine, the Herculean task of rolling it out. If I can manage the logistics for uh, three kids in three different schools under a pandemic, I can manage distribution of a vaccine. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.